Hi, Lloyd. Hi. I'd like to take a moment to talk about one of the most influential and quite possibly terrifying movies of all time. I am, of course, referring to The Shining. You mean Shining. Ah! Is that the best you can do? Oh, my. Oh, yeah, sorry. The Shining. Often regarded as a masterpiece in most circles, The Shining is a heavily discussed piece of cinema history. There have been numerous other videos and articles that talk about what makes it so unsettling. However, today I'd like to focus on one particular element of The Shining. Okay, let's talk. I would like to discuss the spooky sound of The Shining. Every element of The Shining is designed to make you feel uncomfortable. From the shot choices, to the camera movements, even the acting. Down, Wendy. Stop it! Wendy. Give me the bat! Come on! Give me the bat! Give me the bat! <laughs> Everything is carefully chosen and designed to make you feel as uneasy as possible as you slowly watch Jack Torrance and his family descend into madness and come to the realization that there is something very wrong with the Overlook Hotel. The sound design is of course no different in this regard. For starters, the soundtrack to the film is far different to any other soundtrack of its horror movie peers, foregoing traditional melody and harmony to instead create an ambient soundscape of droning high-pitched frequencies and cacophonous strings. This soundscape adds to the feeling of unfamiliarity. Even in what is supposed to be the relative safety of a film's soundtrack, the listener cannot find anything that could be considered familiar. Although the spooky ambience is of course important, I believe that the most unsettling part of The Shining's sound design is its complete and total lack of consistency. If you take a look at other horror movies that were released at around the same time as The Shining, you can see how sound design was more typically used. For example, Ridley Scott's Alien, which came out a year prior to The Shining, uses its soundtrack to build tension before culminating in a stinger sound effect to punctuate a jump scare. In contrast, The Shining uses its soundtrack in a much more unusual way. There are rising moments of ambience during scenes that would be considered tense, but there are also rising swells of ambience in scenes that would otherwise be considered mundane, such as Halloran touring the kitchen with Wendy and Danny. Now, this is where we keep all the dry goods and the canned goods. We got canned fruits and vegetables, canned fish and meats, hot and cold cereals, post toasters, corn flakes, sugar puffs, rice krispies, oatmeal, wheat thin and cream. Many people agree that the reason The Shining is so scary is because there is a complete feeling of uncertainty throughout the film. We know that Jack is going to go crazy and murder his family. Mom, is Dad gonna kill us? We're just gonna have to wait and see. But we don't quite know how we're getting there. The ambiguity in the sound design and its complete lack of consistency really lends towards this feeling, never giving the listener a chance to latch onto something that they would consider safe, whilst also throwing out sound effects at moments that they would never expect to actually be terrifying. All of this culminates later on when the film goes into full-on horror movie mode as Jack stalks and tries to kill his family. As a final note on The Shining, I would like to leave you with the following clip. Danny riding his tricycle around the hotel before eventually stumbling upon the Grady sisters. Even though you know full well what's going to happen, pay close attention to how the sound design plays with your expectations, never fully giving away his hand. Thanks for watching. Play with us, Danny.